All right, guys, uh, today we're going to learn about the ups and downs of boat ownership. And I know what you guys are going to say, um, you know, the good old saying of the best day of every boat owner's life is their, uh, the day that they buy the boat and the day that they sell the boat. I will partially agree, but anybody that hangs on to the boat and, and actually enjoys boating and can afford to maintain a boat will probably tell you that that has been the best thing that they could have done for their family um, out of all their questionable investments in life. I got all kinds of questionable investments. You guys know my channel. You know I like toys. Um, that's just kind of how I roll. So you see my boat in the background here. It is a beautiful, sunny spring day. Uh, it is March 23rd or 20th. I think it's the 24th. So I think it is officially the first day of spring. It doesn't feel like it. Uh, it is 40 something, low 40s. It's cold. Um, I dropped off the boat the first week of October, um, as some of you guys may know if you follow me on Instagram. Uh, the boat broke back on Father's Day of 2022. Um, I held on to the boat for a little bit, waiting to get parts. Um, it was a pretty big one. And trying to find somebody that would fix the boat for me. Um, nobody wants to work. So um, it took a lot longer than anticipated. Found a guy actually semi-local. It has a, a big uh, uh, marine place um, about an hour away from me. Um, we talked about it. It was going to be uh, you know an eight-hour job. Get it done and uh, drop the boat off first week of October. I was hoping to have it back later that week and, and get one week um, to get the boat in the water um, before you know, I had to winterize it. That didn't work out that way. Um, things happen. And uh, when he went to go do the fix, it, it was much worse than, uh, than what we anticipated. Um, so it is March 24th. I'm just getting the boat back now. Um, and here's where it's salty. I love this boat. If I didn't love this boat, I would not have spent the money that I did on this. Um, I'm borderline at the point where if I'd have to sell it, uh, I was... I was poised to make probably a good 15 20 grand profit on it now i'd be lucky to break even um i'm about 17 grand into the fix um and it's ugly but um basically what happened you're gonna see the out drive is nice and freshly painted uh, it's got a brand new transom bracket which we're gonna get in that um while it was there you know just like anything else they tear a car apart we put some trim tabs on it uh put a new navigation gps you're gonna see the sensor down there um so i'm gonna show you guys uh basically what happened that caused all this work so you're gonna see you can already see from here how bad this is so this is what's called a transom shield or a transom plate this is what butts up against your transom the fiberglass in the back and uh, this connects your uh, uh, out drive assembly uh, to your motor so this is the plate that connects that you're gonna see this is very 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 corroded notice you're gonna see a lot of holes here so what had happened um, and, and you'll see this my out drive didn't quite look this bad um, but you know my out drive was pitted a good bit and, and the paint was flaking up like you can kind of see this here so I have a theory um, the theory is I, I was sold on a story on this boat by the marina that I bought it from which probably wasn't very correct um, but with these Volvo Pentas uh, let me see if I can spin this around so you can see it a little bit better. Um, probably not going to see it. With these Volvo Pentas, this SSA, SXA, you're going to see the uh, trim hydraulic pump right there. That trim hydraulic pump it actually sits in the water at all times. And I think what happened is these are probably prone to leaking. Leaking. Um, you know if any kind of water gets inside that um you know electronic assembly it's going to send out electrolysis into the water and that is my guess what happened here this is just electrolysis and corrosion um when i first got the boat i was cleaning it up and i was kind of spraying water back in here and and ignore these holes for now because we're going to get into that 
because I was kind of spraying in the engine, kind of cleaning everything up, and, and I felt what felt like sand that was dug up in here, you know, so I'm kind of doing one of these things when I first got it, getting all the sand out, thinking it was sand. And I'm like, why the hell is there sand inside, uh, you know, my transom plate? But I didn't question it. Uh, man, the more <laughs> the more I look at this, the worse it gets. So, um, we ran the boat for a season. Um, that sand was apparently the, the aluminum that was oxidizing away, and it created a hole. There was one small, let me see if I can remember where it is, because I tried to patch it up. Oh, right here. There was a hole that was right here and I have a rubber plug. I started getting a little bit of water in. It was driving me crazy. I couldn't figure out where it was coming from and I saw a tiny, tiny little crack um, that turned into a little bit bigger hole. I stuck a rubber grommet in there and, and stuck some, uh, I think it was PL5000 or something from 3M. Shoved it in there, fixed it, boom, it was good. For the whole rest of the season, we didn't have any problems. Uh, fast forward to the next season get the boat in the water and it's leaking again so i was like ah you know maybe the um you know may, maybe the the silicone i'm going to use silicone very loosely maybe the silicone cracked over the winter it expanded it contracted you know so i shot a little bit more in there and this is extremely hard to do <laughs> this is extreme where the, the cavity i don't even know if i can get a shot in there but that cavity is all the way up inside there um so it was extremely difficult to get my fingers and, and things back there to be able to patch this uh, but i did the best i could took it out on my birthday and it was leaking it pissed me off we took it home and uh you know i tried to patch it up again fast forward to father's day we take it out and and as you can tell from what happened there we almost sunk the boat thank god thank god i had a um working bilge pump because if i didn't uh this thing would be at the bottom of the uh susquehanna river and hindsight is 2020 <laughs> if i knew how expensive of a fix this was going to be i probably would have just let the boat sink um yeah it, it's a lot so um this little chip or crack turned into that um we went out in the susquehanna and actually this all broke away even more this was just a crack we were hitting some hard waves uh because it was very choppy out and it cracked the smiley face all the way across so it just started pissing in water while we were out on the river um somehow i got it back got it docked my trim was going crazy i couldn't keep the motor trim down it kept on coming up so i'm assuming the electronics were just getting completely soaking wet and you're going to see that crack turn into this huge this huge hole here and you could just see this is all aluminum this is all just breaking off in my hand like that's how bad i was poking it over here and it was just breaking off the aluminum so it is just so corroded and you see around the exhaust uh, around the exhaust section here boom it's just just it's just crumbling in my hands so um i was able to find a transom bracket uh, a transom plate got that taken apart and when they took it apart that's when we found the big stuff so as you can imagine from looking at that there was some water intrusion and it must have been doing it for quite a while and the owner must have know about it the marina must have knew about it and again they sold me a story um while i did get the boat pretty damn cheap for market i'll say i probably got it like half half a value now i understand why i got it half a value even though they sold me even though they sold me um on this dream you know now i understand why so get the transom plate off and uh there was transom rot you know there was water that was coming in had to get the transom plate fixed or actually replaced grounded out and i'll i'll show some pictures of that So, 
that turned into multiple, multiple thousands of dollars worth of fiberglass repair. Um, actually, not even fiberglass. So they, the outer shell of the boat was still good. They just took out the plates on the inside, the, the boards, uh, marine grade board that was impregnated in, in, in resin and waterproofed and all that. So all that had to be done. I had them fix a couple other cracks that I didn't like in the engine bay um, that were over the stringers. They weren't all the way through, so the stringers, thank God, the string, stringers didn't get damaged uh, because where, where the damage was and the water was coming in, it was like that close to getting into the stringer. So thank God, uh, because that's like, at that point, I'll just scrap the boat. Um, so we kind of got lucky there. Um, got everything done again the out drive well it didn't look this bad i would say it probably looked you know about that bad you can see the paint flaking off there um so the out drive looked pretty bad i had the out drive repainted refinished again we put trim tabs i had to mount my navigation a couple other things you can see the exhaust y pipe here so along with that the exhaust y pipe got some corrosion it's not terrible um but the fear was you're gonna see up here in these bolt holes um let me see where it's corroded started getting beaten up so the thought was if we put that in and that starts leaking that's at the bottom side of the motor towards the transom that's another motor out job so that was another you know 850 bucks for a freaking y pipe um yeah so um i'm excited to have the boat back again if i did not love this boat so much uh i would have let this thing sink i would have just i would have scrapped that i was sold it for 10 grand if i wasn't going to lose my ass on this thing i would have just scrapped it the determining factor was is that i i got it cheap enough that even though i spent a lot of money to fix it the value is still like right there and as long as i don't have any crazy issues with this thing um, we can enjoy this for many many years to come the boat is still in pretty tremendous condition the interior is in tre tremendous condition um you know the trailer is brand new the motor just runs like a top so um that kind of was the determining factor if i was going to spend any money on this thing but um do got some plans for some other things we're going to upgrade i had to postpone getting the flooring done so we're getting like uh, that tiva decking um i postponed getting that done last year because i had an appointment to get it done and then the boat broke and then i canceled on the guy um that was actually the second or third time i had to rescheduled because of other things came up i think it was weather related but um <laughs> that's the boat so again you know everybody says about boats break out another thousand i am at the point in life that if it only costs me a thousand dollars a year to maintain this thing that does not bother me one bit uh right now this is a b-o-a-t-t -T or a b-o-a-f-t you know break out another 10,000 break another 15,000 um again if that's what it took to to have a good number of years left out of this boat it stings but I'm all right with that but I'm happy again we were so miserable last year without this boat and the Corvette helped fill that role a little bit you know I'm, I'm always going to be a car guy um, so, so the, the Corvette did help that out quite a bit. I was able to keep some kind of sanity because I still had a car to play around with. If I still had the GT500 and the GT500 was broke and the boat was broke at the same time, I probably would have shot myself in the head. Um, I mean, I got to have something. And that's why I, I like to have multiple toys, whether it's multiple cars or a car and a boat or multiple cars on a boat, whatever it is. I like to have multiple things because when one breaks, it while it stresses me out because it's a lot of money, I'm still able to have something else to enjoy. So there is a method behind my mayhem, guys. And, and I know a lot of you guys are going to make fun of me. You know, you're like, oh, you know, again, um, one, of, one of my friends online always says, uh, you know, the best day in a boat owner's life is when you buy it and when you get rid of it. Again, those are, those are the people that didn't get a chance to enjoy their boat. They bought some piece of shit boat. It gave them nothing but problems. They're not mechanically inclined. And they just didn't make a good investment. Um, we started off low, you know, I got a cheap, like $5,000 boat. It was a nice boat, um, but we got a cheaper, small boat, rocked it for a summer, see how we liked it, uh, because it was a, a total, you know, spur of the moment purchase. Um, and we liked it, we, we just really loved it. And then, uh, you know, the GT500 broke and we were talking about getting a bigger boat. So I sold the GT500, sold the other boat, got a bigger boat. And again, you know, I still pocketed some money, so it worked out pretty good for me. 
Um, but again, you know, the people that say that are just the people that just have not uh, had the opportunity to enjoy a boat. Um, so what the future holds, I don't know. Maybe we'll rock this for a good number of years and sell it. Uh, maybe we'll keep it. I don't know. Um, I almost rather have a beach house than a bigger boat. Um, but, you know, there'll probably be a newer boat in, in the future at some point. Um, but... Uh, you know that that's that so uh, once it clears up I'll open up the boat I'll show you guys uh, some of the transom work done and uh, we'll come back to it so like in typical fashion guys uh, I don't ever finish recording things and I just realized it's like uh, three months later since I started recording the fixing of the boat showed you guys what the transom assembly looked like um, or the transom plate um, and since then, it is now June, uh, we started framing out an area to park the boat. And uh, I'm going to show you guys. Got some flooring done on the boat. So let me go ahead and crawl up there. Show you guys the flooring and uh, some of the other things I've done since then. And uh, we'll wrap the video up. All right, so as you can see, I didn't put the top on the boat. We just got the flooring done the other day. Um, testing it out, see how it is to clean because the uh, tree right here does keep it dirty. Um, but we got our typical spots where water pulls up. We'll see how all this stuff cleans out. But uh, again, you'll see the flooring done. Uh, just got this done a few days ago. That's why the covers are off. Uh, we're gonna call this Deck X. Uh, marine decking that is the the brand that the guy uses that did it um, it's his own brand he just gets the EVA flooring comes out measures it out and then uh, cuts it to your boot so uh, we went with a stone gray top with the oyster gray background I think it matches the boat good and you see how it matches the seats uh, and should still be relatively uh, easy ish to clean um, the other thing I fixed was the running water. Um, so I put a new pump in. Um, and this pump actually hasn't been working since right after I got the boot. So you're going to see my water tank back there. Let me see a new SureFlow pump here. So we got running water. And you should see my new transom. So you're going to see that Volvo Penta piece back there. Volvo knew that this was an issue and that's how they actually fixed it so this actually senses if there is electrolysis in the water and will adjust giving it i don't know positive negative ions electrons neutrons whatever um but that will prevent this from happening again so you're going to see where the white is different on the gel coat um and basically that back piece right there um is where everything was uh the, the new transom was bolted up. Uh, so otherwise, everything is good. Uh, ran the boat a number of times already. This thing is dry, 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 um, which is great. I love pulling out the drain plug where no water comes out of it. That is, that is the best case scenario, guys. Um, so everything is working. Actually, the only thing that's not working is the... Um, trim sending unit i actually had to have michigan uh michigan motor send me a new trim sending unit uh that was doa um so for a thick six thousand dollar transom assembly that kind of sucked but uh, they made it right and gave me a new uh, trim sensor which i did not add a new one yet i was hoping i was gonna be done with spending money on this thing for the year but the bimini top needs to be replaced the zippers um are all corroded these zippers don't work anymore. They're um, actually broken in most places. Uh, so I'm gonna have to figure that out and get some new covers. But otherwise, uh, that's the update for the boat. Uh, apologies that it took so long. Not sure anybody even cares about boat content anyway, but uh, that's it. And if you guys enjoy the content, let me know. I got a drone now. I can get some drone footage over the lakes and oceans and wherever we may be going this summer so if you show some interest i'll show uh, a little bit of footage on the boat this summer if anybody cares thanks for watching bye bye